These notes are on the geometric mean, which is the topic you explored in 110, 1.10. Geometric mean um, is the missing terms in a geometric sequence. So we'll do a couple examples. Find the missing terms in the following geometric sequences. So the first thing that we want to notice is, or remember, is that geometric means I'm multiplying by something each time. So to go from 12 to 2, I multiply by r. From the second term to the third, whoops, I multiply by r again. To go from the third to the fourth, I multiply by r again. So I now actually have a relationship to go from 12 to 96. I am actually, in that full leap, multiplying by r three times. And if you remember, r times r times r is r cubed. So I now can set up an equation. I can say 12 times r cubed equals 96, where I started equals r times itself three times to 96. I now am going to divide both sides by 12, which gets me r cubed equals 8. Now at this point we don't have a way to just punch this into our calculator, although there is a, a formula that you can use, but you won't dis, you know, work on that, discover that until math 3. So instead, I'm going to take out my calculator and I'm going to play. And I'm going to test. So maybe I'll start with 1. 1 times 1 times 1, and I find in my calculator that that's 1. Well, that isn't 8. So now I'll test 2. 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8, which means my r is 2. So now I can go back in and actually fill in this table by multiplying each term by 2. So 12 times 2, so now I know these all equal 2. 12 times 2 is 24. 24 times 2 is 48, and 48 times 2 is 96. I now am going to do a second example. In this example, we have the geometric sequence starting at 1, and this one actually goes out quite a bit further. This one goes all the way out until term 7. Term 1 they give us is 768, and term 7 they give us is 12. So again, I'm going to remember that geometric sequences mean that I am multiplying by something each time. And we, the letter we often use is R common ratio. So now I've got this set up so that I can go straight from the first to the seventh. And when I do that, I see that I'm multiplying r times r times r times r times r times r, which is six r, so r to the sixth. Now I can set up my formula, 768 times r to the sixth equals 12. I'm going to divide both sides by 768. And I'm going to get r to the 6th equals 1 over 64. Now I know many of you are going to be tempted to rewrite this so that 1 over 64 is a decimal. However, it's going to be a lot easier to see what this, what R should be if I keep it as 64. Because what I can actually test at this point is I can test um, what number times itself six times gets me 64. So I can put into my calculator one times one times one six times, that gets me one, that doesn't work. I can try two, so two times two times two six times, and that actually does give me 64. So 2 to the 6 equals 64. 
So I can say that r is 1 over 2 because the 64 is in the denominator. So 1 half. So I now can go back to my table and I can say, well, my r's each time are 1 half. So I can multiply the previous term by 1 half to get the next. 768 times a half is 384. 384 times a half is 192. 192 times a half is 96. 96 times a half is 48. 48 times 1 half is 24. And just to double check, 24 times a half is indeed 12.